How's it going, folks? Jeff Benjamin with the 9to5Mac taking a look at iOS 15.2 Developer Beta 2, which is also available as a public beta. We're going to talk about legacy contacts. We're going to talk about Hide My Email built right into the Mail app and some handy changes for the Find My app. And be sure to hit that subscribe button for more. How's it going folks? Let's go ahead and get right into it. So we're going to open up settings and go to general and go to about. And there you can see the software version running 15.2. This is developer beta two. If you tap it, you can see the build number 19C5036E for those taking score at home. Now it should also be noted that although this is the developer beta, the public beta is also now available for public beta users. Now let's talk about one of the most notable new additions to iOS 15.2 Developer Beta 2, and that is the presence or the return of the legacy contact that we showcased in the initial iOS 15 beta. So if you go into your iCloud settings, go into password and security, you're gonna see down at the bottom legacy contact. Now, a legacy contact is someone you trust to have access to your data in the event that you, well, die. Um, it kind of took a morbid turn there in this video, but that's the reality of the situation in this new digital age that we live in. People leave behind tons of digital treasure. So let's go ahead and tap on legacy contact. You can see the first thing you can do is to add a legacy contact. Also friends and family members that have added you as their legacy contact will appear here below as well. If you tap on learn more, Guess what? There's nothing out there. Basically just takes you to the main Apple support page. Apple hasn't fully built this all out just yet, but basically your legacy contact can access and download data from your account after your death. So if you tap at legacy contact, you get this splash screen explaining more details. So you can add someone you trust to have access to your data after your death. You can share your access key with those people that you trust. And you can do this via a text message and a printout. And then this allows you to pass down your digital legacy. So you can pass down your photos, videos, notes, documents, personal information, and more to the people that you love and trust. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's add our legacy contact just by tapping this button right here. It's going to ask you to verify with face ID. Go ahead and do that. And then here it is Add legacy contact. So basically it automatically fills in your family share contacts. So if you're using family sharing, those members will automatically be displayed here. You can also choose someone else down below and that will allow you to choose from your general list of contacts. But hopefully you trust the people that are in your family sharing group as I do here. And that allows you to easily select one of those members. Just click next. And this gives you a more in-depth explainer about what is actually accessed and by who. So Ducky will be able to access data stored in your account after your death. This data in your account may include photos, messages, notes, files, contacts, calendar events, apps you've downloaded, device backups, and more. So a lot of stuff, but it won't include your iCloud keychain data or licensed media. So your SpongeBob collection on iTunes. Yeah, that's a little bit disappointing, but nonetheless, there's a lot of information that you can get over to your loved ones after you pass away. So let's go ahead and tap on continue here. And now it's time to share your access key and access key gives your legacy contact the ability to access the data in your account after your death. So you can either do so via a message, send a text message, and you can also print a copy, which is a good idea. So you can add that to your estate planning documents and share it with your legacy contact. Now, if you tap print a copy, it literally just opens up the print preview there. And let's go ahead and pinch out on this. And you can see the legacy contacts access key documents. So you can add this to your estate planning, basically just tells you what this does. And then you have like a little QR code below with your access key below, which I've had blurred out here, of course. And that access key is gonna be required uh, for Apple to be able to give you or hand over your digital legacy to your loved ones. But Apple won't just do that. They're also gonna to need to verify a death certificate as well. So they're not just gonna hand this over arbitrarily. So you can also share your access key via a message. Uh, so you can use the canned message that Apple provides, just tap send, or you can go in and edit that message to sort of 
spice it up a little bit or maybe make it a little bit less mechanical sounding, uh, a little bit more loving, I guess you could say, when you share that digital legacy contact. And that contact will automatically be imported in the recipient settings so that they have the key stored there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and send and there we go. So your access key has been shared and Ducky Benjamin has been added as your legacy contact. For security, Apple reviews requests from legacy contacts before providing access to the data in your account. And it's important that your birthday is up to date and accurate because that will be used to verify information during the review process. You could update your birthday right there from that link, but my birthday is correct in the settings. So I'm just gonna tap done. And there we go. Now, eventually, once everyone's up to date with iOS version 15.2, then they'll be able to save that access key on the recipient phone as well. And then again, all of the people that have added you as a legacy contact will appear right here down below. So if you tap on that legacy contact, you have a couple of options. You can resend the access key uh, or you can remove the contact outright. So those are a couple of options there for managing your legacy contacts. Now say the unfortunate happens and you do pass away, how do your loved ones that you've added access your digital legacy? Well, they simply go to digital-legacy.apple.com and then they request access, they verify with their account, they log in, and then once they do that, here you can see where you can type in that legacy contact access key that was either printed out on that piece of paper or also share with you digitally via that text message that we sent out earlier. So you just type in the legacy contact, Apple will wanna verify the birth date and they will also wanna verify the death, death certificate as well before just handing over all of your data. So what do you guys think about that? Let me know down below in the comments section. Let's talk about something a little bit more upbuilding, shall we? So the Mail app now has by default, hide my email built right in. Let me show you how this works. So compose in a new message, tap the from field, let's tap that again. And now look what you see. Of course, that allows you to choose between your different addresses, but at the bottom, notice, hide my email. So now directly from the mail app, you can create a random address that forwards to your inbox. So no longer do you have to create a hide my email address from the settings or sign in with Apple or with Safari in iOS 15, but now you can do so directly from the mail app. Now, what's interesting is that it doesn't actually give you an email address, which is randomly created until you choose a recipient, a to address. So let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm gonna type in the to address, Jeff at nine to five Mac, let's choose that. And then you'll see it randomly generates an email address that's bound to the recipient address. So every recipient address gets its own randomly generated hide my email iCloud address. Now let's go ahead and change the recipient to a different address. So Ducky Benjamin, you can see the email address, the from address, the hide my email randomly generated address has changed. It's different than the one that we had earlier when I had Jeff at nine to five Mac.com because it binds to each separate email address. Now, what if you try to send to multiple recipients? Ah, only one recipient allowed. Messages sent with Hi My Email can only be delivered to one address because like I said, each recipient gets its own unique, randomly generated Hi My Email iCloud address, which of course forwards to your real email address. So let's go ahead and send this email. So we'll just compose a quick test message and send just like that. And you can see it goes out and sends just as you would expect, but it's using hide my email to keep your real email address private. Now let's go into settings, go into your account information, go into iCloud, and then you'll see hide my email. So let's select that. And now you're gonna see at the top that email address that was just created. And you can see where it's from. It's from the mail app and it's bound to the Jeff at nine to five Mac.com recipient, just like that. Now I can always go in here, uh, change the label for that, add notes if I want to. I can even deactivate that email address. So if I'm tired of receiving, maybe someone's sending spam to that email address, well, simply de deactivate it. And there you go, helping keeping you spam free. What do you guys think about Hide My Email? I think it's great that it's integrated in the Mail app. Now, let's talk about some Find My updates that relate to AirTags. You see, help return lost items. That used to be called Identify Found Item. 
but Apple has changed the text for that to make it a little bit more obvious as to what it does. So if you encounter an AirTag on the street or whatever the case may be, you can help return those lost items, identify the owner and get that item back to the owner. Now, item safety alerts help you to be notified when an unidentified AirTag is following you. So if someone uh, places an AirTag in your bag, you will eventually receive an alert uh, letting you know that, hey, there's an unidentified air tag following you. You should know about it. But in iOS 15.2 beta 2, you now have this items that can track me option. And this is like a more proactive item safety alert feature. So when you think a nearby item is being used to track your location, you can discover it on demand. Items can only be found if they are not in range of their owner's device up to 50 meters. And in some situations, it could take up to 15 minutes for these to be discoverable. But I'm gonna show you, here's an unknown air tag. And I'm going to go ahead and take the battery out and put it back in. That'll help it quickly recognize that it's an unknown air tag nearby you can see it right there unknown air tag first seen now uh, so if that was somewhere around my location i would be able to first of all identify that there's an unknown air tag around me i could also play a sound to locate that air tag and then if necessary, unscrew the AirTag, take the battery out so that no one can track me uh, using those, those instructions to disable that AirTag. Definitely a worthwhile safety enhancement for AirTags. Now, finally, the TV app has received a noteworthy update. You no, no longer see the little bar at the bottom of your screen, but now you get a sidebar that contains all of the relevant media destinations. So you get the TV with watch now and Apple original sports search. You also get an integrated store. So you can just simply tap movies or TV shows to access the store. And then you have your library, of course, below that just makes it a lot easier to navigate the TV app. So ladies and gentlemen, that has been a look at iOS 15.2 developer beta two. What do you think? Let me know down below in the comment section. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.